It's coffee time. You guys know what I'm talking about. So what exactly are multi-scale guitars? Let's see if this can officially be my first reasonable length video. I feel like I've wound up in a bit of a unique position to add some value in this conversation, in that so far, my very small, but very cool, and very sexy audience I've cultivated has been around 80s music, but I also love modern metal. See, I grew up listening to classic rock, Around the end of high school, college, I got really into like scene music, pop, punk, emo, post-hardcore, and then I started learning guitar during the giant forum gent boom. <laughs> so that's just kinda in my blood at this point. I even worked for Aristides for a while. I have a great love for and knowledge of super modern designs as well, and I've owned a ton of them. My goal for the channel long term is to sort of bridge the gap between 80s shred, big hooky modern rock like emo and pop punk, and metalcore, melodic death metal, and show how they cross over and what fans of each can learn from the others. So let's jump into what exactly multi-scale does, whether or not you need a multi-scale guitar, and why I looked for this specific guitar for eight years and just sold it. Yeah. <laughs> One of the reasons guitar is so beautiful and cool is that it's a pretty ad hoc design. Not everything on it makes a lot of sense. It can't be perfectly in tune, it's got these weird intervals between the strings. All that funk and vibe is part of what makes guitar awesome compared to a much more correct instrument like a piano. We get to do these cool things like bends and pick slides and really express ourselves. And when you do look at a piano, well, all the strings are different lengths because lower notes need a longer string to produce a pitch accurately and clearly. That is the main principle to consider when examining multi-scale guitars. Multi-scale guitar-like instruments date back to the 1500s, and Novax actually patented the term fan frets and started doing multi-scale modern electric guitar designs in the late 80s. He doesn't get enough credit these days. A Novax is actually what John Mayer used on Neon. You can of course see all sorts of jazzers now using multi-scale guitars and quote, hybrid guitars that are designed to bridge the gap between bass and guitar, uh, guys like Charlie Hunter. But obviously multi-scales have become most associated with metal guitars in the last 10 to 15 years. Man, why did I get this? I like black cold brew. It was later in the day, I figured I should get something, you know, some milk. Well, it's all milk now. Look at that color. At least Wawa has oat milk now. You know, take what you can get. <laughs> So why should you care as a guitarist? What does multi-scale do? Well, first off, maximum intonation range. If you're tuning low, there's a finite note on your guitar that you can intonate to accurately. So multi-scales are great for getting more intonation range on the bottom strings with a baritone scale length while keeping the shreddy scale on the high strings. Also, tone. Like a piano, or consider a bass, think of the difference between a Strat and a Les Paul. A lot of that tonal difference is the scale length. A shorter scale has a rounder note with a lot of fundamental, whereas a longer scale maintains a lot of harmonics and has a really nice snappy tone. So with a multi-scale, you can often achieve a very balanced tone across strings because your low strings will naturally tighten up a little bit, but you can keep some fatness on the high strings. This is also important because in general, big strings can become a big problem. The larger a string is, the less evenly it vibrates. For nice sustain and clarity, you want a string to vibrate in a circle. It kind of starts going more sideways the larger it is. So a large string can result in a weird lack of sustain, a muddy note. To some people, they'll always feel weird under the fingers and they can even generate problems at the saddle. Don't get me wrong, there are people out there who do drop G on a Les Paul and it works great for them. But going to a longer scale length and using a more normal gauge string can be a big help for a lot of people. In some cases, you can get better feeling string tension as well. 
Let me explain. Say you play tens on a strat and you're in drop D a good amount of the time. Well, off the rack, heavy bottom sets are really weird. The A and D strings are way too heavy for no reason, but you still need to get some extra tension on that low string for drop D. Well, switching to something like this Ormsby, which is strat scale on the top and moves to 27.5 inches by the bottom, could overall help even out the balance between the strings tension-wise as well as keep that low D under control while still buying regular off the rack 10 to 46 strings. That's a very basic example because you could get super nerdy with this. For example, I keep this guitar in drop A sharp, which is two steps down, C standard, but then also dropping the low string like drop D. I play Kurt Mangan coated strings and the largest string that they coat is a 60. If this were a normal 25.5 straight across guitar, that low A wouldn't be feeling too hot. And if I just sucked it up and went uncoated and moved to larger strings, that could introduce some of the problems I was talking about earlier. And I'd rather not deal with that. <laughs> What makes a good multi-scale design, how can it go wrong, and what are some good ones? Well, a big thing with multi-scales is the zero fret. This is the point on the guitar at which a fret is parallel, like a normal guitar, which you can see is right about the ninth fret on this Ormsby. A lot of companies that phone this in don't think about that, and those are the really uncomfortable ones. Also, where the neck sits in the body. Check how deep this is, and check how close the bridge is to the end. Just like a regular baritone, if you add all your extra length straight out of the body this way, you get a really giant feeling and uncomfortable to play guitar. But if you set the neck further into the body and then just give yourself you know, the extra access you need and move the bridge back so your scale length is correct, and it's closer to the end, you get a really comfortable and normal playing experience. Ormsby really nail the modern multi-scale thing. They have a quite large fan, which can solve a lot of problems, but it still feels very comfortable. I also really love Aristides's fan. I'll put up on screen right now a picture of a great one that I used to own. It is a subtler fan, but incredibly well-designed and comfortable. So if you're looking for just a bit of these benefits to maybe smooth out your playing experience instead of, you know, tuning super low and needing to solve some big intonation problem like this guitar would, that could be a good way to get into a multi-scale. Strandberg's fan is very comfy as well. Just keep in mind that the Endure neck and, well, all headless guitars in general are super love-hate. You gotta try one first. Finally, I'm free. <laughs> In conclusion, do you need a multi-scale? Well, generally speaking, I do find the adjustment process very simple. A high-quality multi-scale doesn't feel weird at all. So as long as you don't need a tremolo, there are options for multi-scale tremolos. I just don't really like a lot of them, like Kalers. I don't think there's a downside to trying one out. You'll probably experience your guitar feeling and sounding slightly better. If you have a big problem with the feel or sound of your guitar when tuning down, I think multi-scale is a great option without going all the way to a full-on baritone, which can be a bit more demanding and niche of an instrument. A great one, I love big old baritones, but they tend to lend themselves more to a specific playing style. Multiscales bridge that gap. For me, well, obviously I sort of like regular guitars. That's where I've landed. I will definitely use multiscales in many cases when tuning below drop C to get the exact feel and tone I want with good gauge strings. But now we've wrapped all the way back around to why am I selling this? It rules. Look, it's got the extra frets, great finish, Roasted neck, swamp ash body, stainless, uh, great. This is the sickest Ormsby I've ever owned. Their quality and design has gotten better over time. This has some features that are very difficult to find on their production models, like the roasted neck combined with the swamp ash body, combined with the uh, six string inline pointy headstock. I'm gonna get you. Well, sometimes life stuff happens. Sometimes you need to buy other gear and 
I had to admit to myself that I'm not doing a lot of chugging right now. So some sacrifices have to be made and this is gonna go to a wonderful new home and be played every day. I lied, the ice melted and I have some bonus coffee now. So you might have noticed how reticent I am to address the YouTube stuff. Then I saw this. Yeah, my hand has been forced. So if you've made it this far, I'd really like to see you again next time, which m means you should, you know, hit hit the subscribe thing and, and, and the bell, something about the bell. Yo, I did it. Hell yeah. So yeah, hope to see you next time. Next week, I got a video about Zach Wild coming up, but maybe not in the exact way that you would think. Remember to play your guitar, have fun, bye.